Hey friends, it is Jenna What Is Up and welcome back to the War Game Garden and welcome to a preview of this game right here. This is Tend. It is published by Ivy Studios who's sponsoring today's video. So a huge thank you to them. And it is designed by Toby Sarnell as well as the Ivy Games um, team. So we have Austin Harrison, Zach Dixon, as well as Max Anderson. And this is a flip and write that is one to six players, it plays in about 90 minutes, and is 14 plus. So I did just say that this is a flip and write, but there are a lot of things and writes going on here. We have flipping and writing, we have roll, we have stamp, we have scratch, a bunch of different things going on here, and I'm super excited to show off this game for you guys or to you guys today. So this is going to crowdfunding. I will have a link down in the description box to that if you guys are interested in checking it out. But like I said, it does have a solo mode, so that is great for all of my solo players out there. And yes, we're gonna be going into all of the um, components, the aim of the game, as well as exactly how Tend is played. Like I said, there is a lot going on here, so I'm not going to go full on into exactly how the game plays, but I am gonna go into a good overview so you guys can get a better feel if this is something for you. So if you guys wanna see that, then just keep on watching and give this video a, a big thumbs up if you enjoy. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. Comment down below if Tend seems like a game that you would enjoy. I'd love to chat about it down in the comments. But without further ado, let's get into this preview of Tend, shall we? All right, so getting into the aim of the game as well as the components, which I will say right now, all of the components in front of me are prototype and subject to change, um, but they are very nice or it is a very nice prototype. So for the aim of the game, basically every player is going to be playing as a farmer and you are going to have your farm here that you're going to be tending to your crops and your farm animals. You're going to be fishing, mining, chopping wood in the forest, um, giving gifts to your neighbors. All of the things that you know and love from a lot of those like cozy farming simulation video games like Stardew Valley as well as Animal Crossing, different things like that. And you're going to be building up this cargo manifest to send up to a corporation called the Zenith Corporation for them to kind of study, I guess. So that is kind of the aim of the game. You're going to be playing over 12 rounds. There are three seasons. The first season has five rounds, second season has four, and then the third season has three. So you go five, four, three. I will say right now that the sheet that I have in front of me here is a little bit different with the round tracker. Um, it started out as four, 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 but they have changed it since to five, four, three three because at the end of each of these seasons you're going to have a big objective that you're going to be scoring so you have the season one objective season two and season three that you can see in front of me here um, I will be putting in a ton of b-roll for this one so you guys can see all of the components um, but yes you're gonna be playing over those 12 rounds and at the end of those 12 rounds the player with the most victory points will be the winner of 10 so that is the aim of the game but getting into all of the components here in in front of me so I do have the pads in front of me here you would in a typical game peel off one of these sheets for each player and then one of these sheets for each player so each player is going to have two sheets in front of them each player is also going to get this scratch off pad here this is actually broken into the woods and the mines and these are going to be these places that you're going to be scratching off different squares um, kind of representing you chopping down trees as well as going mining in the mines. So we have that there. Each player also gets their little corporate commissary here. This is a little like glossary of all of the different resources that you can gain and then what you can do with them because every single time that you gain a resource in one way or another, you can either decide to make it into coins and then use those coins for different things or you can take the shape that it is and then place that into your cargo manifest, which is going to be a lot of the victory points that you get in the game. So you have those there. And then as for other things that each player is going to have, they're going to have their coin here, which I do believe that they are going to be switching these from silver to gold 
to match the Zenith Corporation coins on the commissary here. Um, each player is also going to have some different fishing spot cards and they are all going to start off face down because in the game there are going to be various ways that you can unlock these different uh, fishing spots. So every player is going to start off with pond fishing and then eventually you can unlock river fishing, lake fishing, as well as grotto fishing. So you have the three cards there. You also have the geo card here that each player is going to get. And if you get to a certain spot in the mine and you discover a geode, you are able to then flip over this geo card and it works kind of similar to fishing, which we'll get into. Each player is going to have two fishing dice. One is white and one is black. Um, there is a, I believe this is a first player marker, or it could just be a fun little coin that you get in the game, but it is the Tend logo here, and that I just have beside me there. Each player is going to have a full set of the, I believe it's six different markers. You have a black marker that you can just use to mark off things on the sheet. They all are double-sided, so with the black one, you just have one big kind of dotting stamp on one side, and then on the the other side you have what you can use to mark off stuff on your sheet and then you also have the five different colors here for the stamping markers so there are going to be again double-sided one side is going to be the stamp for that specific color and then the other side is going to be just a regular marker side and they do say that you can just use one of these for your um, like marking marker as well if you wanted to do a fun color um, but they do give you that black one for that specifically but each of these markers are going to be a different stamp that you're going to be using in order to place things into cargo manifest and each color is going to coordinate with a different thing so those are all of the markers and i do believe that that is everything for each player each player is also going to get dealt to neighbor cards and then you're going to decide which side you want each of those neighbor cards to go um, and I will get into what the neighbor cards are but basically you are going to be gifting those things to your neighbors on either your left or your right so you have those there and that is everything for all of the player components additionally for what is going to be in the center of the table we have this play mat here which is a neoprene play mat and you're going to have all of the kind of public information for everyone here so like I've already kind of stated here you have your three different objectives so you have season one season two and season three and then you also have the five different actions that you're going to be able to choose from because in the game each round you're going to be choosing two of the five um, actions that are available with these cards here so this is why it is a flip and right because you are going to be flipping over five cards and then every player can choose which one of those five or which two of those five they're going to use each round so right now out here we have a two coin starter cards there are going to be some starter cards i have planted these in a specific way so i can explain all of the different actions to you guys but we have a two coin starter card tend fishing um chopping as well as mining so those last four are going to be your main actions which we'll get into um you also have these here which are going to be your upcoming actions that these two here are actually going to slide down to these two spots on the next round and then all of these are going to go to the discard pile and three new ones are going to come out so this is a really big part of the game so you have these kind of decks that you construct of season one cards season two cards and season three cards and these are going to be more advanced actions that are going to be introduced into the deck each round and you are actually going to be able to see the two that are going to be added in the next round so you can kind of prepare for those so with these ones here these starting cards are just going to be a one action they are just going to give you one action and that is it but as you introduce these new cards in here or these season cards in they are going to allow you to do an action and it's going to have a middle thing here that is going to be a prerequisite that you need in order to then also do the bottom so with this one here this is the cave fisher card so you can either do a mining action or a fishing action and then if you have two or more mining levels which we'll get into what that is you will then be able to get what is at the bottom so sometimes this is a specific resource that you get um, in this situation it is a little fish but sometimes it is an additional action that you could do as well so these are always going to be added in each round and they are going to be added into the deck as well so they are potentially going to go out and then be reshuffled into the deck and then possibly come out again so those are the upcoming action cards and then lastly here we have the 
um, different neighbor cards. Like I said, I will explain those, but each player is always going to have one on their left and one on their right in order to possibly gift to their neighbors. Um, there's also a spot here for a discard pile and then a discard pile here for the action cards. So that is the main little area there. We have some additional action cards over here. So there's always going to be a variety of these different action cards and there are big decks of these. So each game is going to be completely different depending on the action cards that you put into these decks here. So that is just to add some more variety for the action cards. And then also over here, we have three decks additionally of more objective cards. So the objectives are always going to be different. The action cards are always going to be different, just adding in more variety for gameplay. So that is everything for the center part there. And I think the only other thing are the dice on my left and my right. So you have four different types of dice over here. These are going to be all of your kind of fruits and vegetables, I guess. There's a little pineapple looking thing. These little like blueberries, I tend to call them. We have some like pumpkin looking things as well as these little like raspberries, I call them. They are like not really real fruits and vegetables. They're like made up fancy ones. Uh, but over here on my right, you have different animal products. So these are going to be representing a chicken, a sheep, and a cow. And these are going to be dice that are going to get you different animal products. So the chicken is going to get you eggs, the sheep are going to get you wool, and then the cow is going to get you milk. And again, these are going to be resources that you're going to gain and then either be able to put them into your cargo manifest, or you're going to be able to gift them to your neighbors, um, or put them towards different badges, or you're also gonna be able to get coins for them. So yes, I believe that is everything for the components in front of me. So let's get into how exactly Tend is played. All right, so like I've already gone over, the game of Tend is going to be played over 12 rounds, and each round you're going to have five different cards to choose from. You're going to simply just pick two of those five cards to do that action, and then that will be your turn. You're gonna continue this over and over again. It is simultaneous. So every Every player is going to be doing their two actions at the same time, doing different things, going fishing, tending to their farm, all of the things. And then at the end of those 12 rounds, you're going to count up your scores. And then whoever has the most victory points is going to be the winner. So let's get into all of the different actions, which like I said, I'm not going to go super in depth with all of these actions. But the first one here, this card here is not really an action, but it just is that you get two coins um, that you can then put towards anything. There is never any resources that you're going to gain and kind of hold on to. Whenever you gain a resource in 10, you must immediately then and there decide what you want to do with it, whether that is gaining coins for it and then using those coins right away, or you're going to look at what shape and color of stamp it's going to be and then put that into your cargo manifest. You can also decide to put them towards these medals and badges, which we'll get into, or you can decide to put them towards your neighboring bonuses. So right when you get those coins, you must use them. And right when you get any resources, you must use them as well. So that is the two coin starter card there. You also have Tend, which Tend is the first main action that I'm going to be talking about. And Tend does have the most going on. So this is going to, if you decide to take the Tend action, is going to give you four different options of what you can do with that Tending action. So the first one is going to be that you can plow. So you can plow the land and the only way for you to take these dice, these crop dice and place them into your farm is if the land below it is plowed. So with this here, it does say plow four times. You are going to put a little squiggly line in four of these boxes and then that is going to allow you to then place these different crop dice onto your farmland here. So um, with the small, little dice here. These are going to be a two by two square. These slightly larger medium ones here are going to be three by three. And then the largest dice here are going to be a four by four. So that is the one thing you can do is plow your land to get prepared for those crops. Another thing that you can do is what I just mentioned, which is planting a crop. So you can take whatever die you have the plowed land for, you can take that and then you are going to be starting it on the number one. So all of these different dice are going to be numbered and you're going to start it on the number one, you're going to place it onto that plowed land. And then with crops as well as the animals, you're going to be taking up these dice once 
per round. So each round you are then going to be allowed to tick this up once and then tick this up again. And then whenever you, with these dice, see the colored inside, so most of the sides are going to be a darker color. And then once you see a lighter color, that means that you can harvest that crop. So some of them are a little bit different. These little pineapples here, the one is dark, the two is light, so that actually allows you to harvest a pineapple. Um, and then the three is dark again, and then number four is light. So you get to harvest a second pineapple with this one die. And then whenever you see a side that has an X, that means that you are going to actually take that die away, and then you are going to have to then plant another crop of that type. So with these kind of raspberry colored dice here, you are going to only get one harvest out of these. So it's gonna start on the one, you're gonna tick it up to the two, tick it up to the three, you're going to be able to harvest that fruit and then because it has an X, that die is gonna go away and then you're going to have to plant it again. So that is going to be the same for all of these different crops here. This blue crop here does require you to build a trellis first. So you are going to have to pay a few resources in order to do that. And then once you do have that paid for, you are then going to be allowed to kind of put in a little trellis and then you're going to be able to put in these blueberry or blue dice there. And then the last action, which I do think I mentioned before that there were four different actions, but there really is only three. Um, the last one that you can do when you decide to take the tending action is to water your crops. And this is going to be when you have quite a lot of crops. You can do it when you have one, but basically what is going to happen is when you take this action, you're going to be able to tick up one die and then every other die that is adjacent to that die. So you could just do this with one die to kind of accelerate you ticking up that die and being able to harvest it, but you can wait until you have a lot of dice adjacent and then you can actually uh, tick that die and then everything else. So it's a really good way to tick up your dice all at once in order to uh, kind of make that harvesting action a little bit faster. So that is the third and final for the tending action. Additionally, for the tending action, you can have your animals, which I will kind of mention this little groundskeeping here, which animals are slightly different than the crops. Animals are going to not need any plowed space in your farm area here. They are going to need fences. So that is when this little groundskeeping area comes into play. So this is going to be how you build these fences. And these fences are going to build enclosures for these animals. So you have to have a fully enclosed enclosure in order to put these animals out. And you do have to pay for these animals. So the eggs or the chickens are gonna be two coins. The sheep for the wool is going to be three and then the cow for the milk is going to be four coins. Once you have paid those, you do get that die and you are able to actually save it here until you have a space and then you're going to be able to place that animal out into the pasture once you have an enclosed space for that animal. So the groundskeeping here is going to allow you to use those different resources. So you can use coins, you can use stones and wood, as well as hardwood and then iron and copper in order to build fences in your farming area here. So that is everything for the tending action. Next up is the fishing action. So when I was going over all the components, I already mentioned that each player is going to start with only pond fishing. So that is actually on the little sheet here, but you can also eventually unlock river fishing, lake fishing, and and grotto fishing and whenever you do that you are simply just going to flip over that coordinating card and that is going to give you another spot to fish and when you fish we're actually going to take these two fishing die you're going to say hey I am taking the fishing action if you do have more than one fishing locations unlocked you do have to state before you roll the die which one you're going to you can't roll and then decide which your better option was you do have to say hey I'm gonna go river fishing you're going to roll those two dice and then those are going to give you the coordinates of where that fish is that you're going to catch so I did roll a two and a two so I would look at this little grid here I would look at at row two and column two and then whatever those match up to that is the fish that I'm going to get so I would actually get this little purple cat looking fish which I just call it a catfish um, but additionally with these dice they do have a tend icon here the little T if you ever roll that that is actually a wild so you can actually choose 
where um, that will be. So yes, that is everything for the fishing. You are simply just going to roll those dice and then gain whatever fish is there. I will additionally say that there are some empty spots and this is where the upgrades for your fishing rod come into play. So you can eventually upgrade your fishing rod to allow you to catch in a bigger area. So for example, with the first fishing rod, whatever your coordinates are, you can catch that spot as well as adjacently. So you could do the middle, up, down, left, or right. So it kind of gives you more options when it comes to the fishing. And then if you unlock the other fishing rod upgrade, this gives you nine different spaces. So you have the center one that you rolled, as well as all of the eight spaces around it. So up, down, left, right, and diagonally as well. So those are some upgrades there. And then additionally, you can get lures. So these are going to allow you to catch more fish. So you would need a fishing upgrade. And then if you had a lure, you'd be able to choose two of the fish in any of those areas to catch. And these fishing upgrades are simply just going to be upgraded by using different resources in order to unlock that specific upgrade and that specific lure. So for the first fishing rod upgrade here, you're going to need to have three coins and one piece of wood in order to unlock that upgrade. And then lastly, for the fishing action, you might be wondering how exactly you unlock these different fishing locations. And these are going to be unlocked in various ways. So the first one, which is the river fishing, is going to be unlocked once you fix the broken bridge, which there's this little box here. You need two wood two coins, a stone, and a copper in order to fix the broken bridge and unlock the river fishing. And then the other two, so lake fishing and grotto fishing, are connected to the woods and the mines, which are going to be the next two actions that I'll explain. But when you get to the bottom of the woods, you're going to unlock lake fishing. And then when you get to the bottom of the mines, you're going to unlock grotto fishing. And speaking of the woods and the mines, that is actually connected to the last two main actions, which is chopping and mining. And they are virtually the same action, but just performed in either the woods or the mines. So you're going to pick up your little scratch card here. And depending on whether you are doing the chopping or the mining action, the chopping you're going to do in the woods, and then the mining you're going to do in the mines. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your coin here and you're going to scratch off to start off in one of the top boxes. So you always have to start at the top and then going on from there, you always have to scratch off adjacent to an already scratched box. So you will notice that there is a little like squiggly path on each of them. And this is actually there for you to have like the best path and the quickest path to the bottom. So if you are really trying to get straight to the bottom, just follow that path all the way to the bottom in order to unlock those uh, lake fishing and grotto fishing. You can follow that path, but the better kind of resources are going to be off the path. So you're going to have to go off the beaten path in order to find those better resources. Um, but again, you can follow the path in order to get down to the bottom the quickest. And you might be wondering why exactly the path is the quickest way down. The reason for that is that there is going to be an additional kind of chopping or additional mining action on the path. So you are actually going to scratch off. And if you ever see the chopping or mining icon, that's going to allow you to then chop again. So it allows you to accelerate um, the kind of movement down to the bottom. So you're only going to find those additional chopping or mining actions on the path. And then you're also going to see on the right side the different resources that you're going to find in each of the sections of the woods and the mines. So in order to actually pass that middle spot there, you are going to have to upgrade your tools. So if you don't have an upgraded tool, you're only going to stay in the top half of both the woods and the mines. But if you upgrade your equipment, which I will get into in a second, you will then be able to go below that line. So that is pretty much everything for the chopping and the mining actions. Whatever resources you scratch off and get, you will then have to use immediately. So obviously in the woods, you're going to get wood and hardwood as well as sap and bones. And then in the mines, you're going to get stone, copper, iron, as well as some more rare gems down below, as well as geodes, which I mentioned, whenever you get to your first geode in the mines, you will then be able to flip over the geo card. And then that's going to work the same as fishing. You're going to roll those two dice and then figure out or discover what is in that geode. So that is that. 
then the only other thing I have to kind of explain for the chopping and the mining action is upping your skill in both chopping and mining. So you have these two boxes here and whenever you scratch off a spot that has either a purple background or a yellow background, typically they're just going to have a white background. But if you discover a purple background or a yellow background for the mines, you are going to up your skill level in one of those two things. So in the woods, it's going to be a purple background. And when you do that, you're going to scratch off the next level from left to right. And that's going to give you some sort of reward. And then also some of the prerequisites for some of the action cards are going to be you needing a specific level in the mine or in chopping. So specifically with this card that I already showed you guys at the beginning, it says have two plus mining levels. So you would have had to discover two of those yellow background boxes in the mines in order to have that prerequisite to then use the bottom of that card. So that is kind of upping your skill in both chopping and mining. And the only other things that I have to explain for this sheet over here is the energy bars as well as the social rewards. So I've already kind of explained the social rewards, but each player is going to have those two neighboring cards on their left and their right. And whenever you gain a specific kind of resource that is on one of these cards, so for example, if I got this little gobble fish, that's what I call it, this little blue fish on this neighbor card, Card here instead of putting that into my cargo manifest or getting coins for it I would then actually be able to give this to my neighbor on my left side and then they would be able to use this resource on the next round and then at the bottom of the card here it will tell me how many neighboring bonuses I get so there are some slightly easier ones that are going to get me one bonus so this one here with the blue at the bottom is going to get me one bonus whereas this one here is a little bit more difficult to get so if I give this to my neighbor on my right Right, I'm actually going to get two neighboring bonuses and what this means is that I will actually be able to scratch off the leftmost spot on either my left side or my right side depending on the neighbor I gave it to and that's going to give me some bonuses and then at the end of the game it will potentially give me some more victory points as well so that is the social rewards giving your neighbors some gifts and then lastly we have energy bars here which you can use coins in order to gain energy bars and energy bars are going to allow you to gain another action in whatever action you are performing so this is going to give you two uses so if you unlock an energy bar you're going to circle it and then you're going to use it once by placing a line in one direction and then once by placing a line in the other direction creating an X and then that will be your two uses of that energy bar and like I said this just gives you another action of whatever action you're performing so if you used it for fishing that would allow you to gain another fish if you used it for chopping that would allow you to chop one more spot or it could also additionally get you another chopping action so you can go below the line without having an upgrade. And speaking of upgrades, you do have three different upgrades here. You have your upgraded tending tools. So you have a little watering can upgrade. You have an upgraded chopping action, which is going to be an upgraded ax. And then you have your upgrading mining action, which is an upgraded pickaxe. And these are all going to cost the same thing. So they're all going to cost four coins, one of each of the blueprints. So there's a red blueprint and a purple blueprint, and you can actually only get those with the social rewards. And then additionally, they're going to have or need a copper and an iron in order to unlock that upgrade. So there's those three there. And then the fishing upgrades do count as an upgrade as well. Um, so that is everything for the energy bars as well as the social rewards. And that is everything for this one sheet here. And then lastly, we have the sheet here, which is going to be the projects as well as medals and badges. So these are going to be a big part of the game, especially the badges for getting victory points. But you have the kind of projects here. This is a great way for you to spend coins. You're simply just going to spend a certain amount of coins in order to get an additional resource, or you also have three additional things up here. You have the recycling program, which allows you to actually add in another action card into the action deck. 
So you can kind of uh, customize the action that's going to be coming up next. Um, you have the Woods Explorer, which if you unlock this, you actually get double the amount of points for every badge that you've completed at the end of the game. And then you also have the Buyback Program, which allows you to scratch off any one thing on any one of your badges. So it allows you to actually cross off a resource that you might not be able to get or you're having a hard time getting. So you can only do that once. You can only ever do any of these projects once to just get additional resources or do any of those little actions there. And then lastly, you have the badges, which this is one of my favorite parts of the game. And it is a little bit of just like collecting of different things. So like I mentioned, whenever you get some sort of resource, you're either gonna get coins for them, you can put them into your cargo manifest, you can give them to your neighbors, or you can place them into a badge. So you have your wood badge, you have your hardwood badge, iron badge, all these different things. Basically, whenever you gain any of these resources, you can put them towards that badge. Whenever you finish off one row, that grants you a medal, and then that actually coordinates to a certain shape or a certain amount of coins that you can get. The certain shape then goes into your cargo manifest, so you're actually giving the Zenith Corporation some medals to see, I guess, for your accomplishments. Um, and then once you've completed two rows, so that is the same for all of these, you will notice that the top six only have two rows, so you're going to complete those two rows in order to complete that badge, but the bottom three actually have four rows. You can complete as many of those rows as you want, but in order to complete and get that badge at the end of the game, you only have to complete two of those four rows. So once you've completed two of the rows, gotten your two medals for those two rows, you also additionally get some victory points at the end of the game for each of the badges that you complete. So that is pretty much everything there. You're going to get victory points for your cargo manifest. Basically, you are just going to get one victory point for every single box that you've stamped in your cargo manifest. But then each player is actually going to have a certain stamp color that is going to either get them more victory points or less victory points based off of the little section. So each cargo manifest is going to be broken into three sections. So you have your left, your center, and your right. And then each sheet is actually going to be different. And for example, for mine here, on my left section, all of my yellow stamps or my mining stamps are going to be worth zero victory points. Everything else in that section is going to be worth one victory point. The middle here, the mining stamp is actually going to be worth two victory points and then everything else will be one victory point. And then my right section, everything is going to be one victory point but the fishing stamp is going to be worth zero victory points. So that actually kind of makes you think about where you're placing those different stamps. And then additionally for the cargo manifest, you do have to place different colors beside each other. You can never have the same color touching each other, if that makes sense. So that is pretty much everything for the cargo manifest. And then additionally, if you ever finish a row of your cargo manifest, you also get an additional action you guys can see there. Um, but yes, I do believe that that is everything for this quick overview. It's not actually that quick um, of Tend. Uh, but yeah, that is everything for that. All right, friends. So that's going to be everything for today's preview of Tend. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a big Big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. A huge thank you to Ivy Studios again for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate it very, very much. Be sure to check out the campaign for Tend. It is up now. I will have a link in the description box for it if you're interested. But yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile and I will see you in the next board game video. Bye friends.